Now, um, we first learned about Lewis structures, electron dot notation, putting them together for compounds. Well, we did it originally in Chem 1. Then we saw them again in Chem 2, and I wanted to, I, I will next year probably do this. This is going to be a kind of a waste of a, of a video. It's only going to be for this year, because next year I'm going to do it as part of the organic. Although I was afraid to, and I've always been afraid to, because uh, it's the beginning of the year, and you know, we, people do tend to get scared and drop this class in the <laughs> middle of the year. Uh, so, um, in the beginning of the year, and this is a really tough concept. Um, so I kind of just did the basic electron dot notations and Lewis structures, and I didn't do the hard ones. I just kind of had you memorize that, well, carbon dioxide's got a double bonds in it, and uh, oxygen and nitrogen have double bonds in their molecules. And that was it. You never really knew why. Now you're going to learn how to do anybody, including resonance structures and formal charges, and it's tough. So I kind of have to work through this pretty quickly. I have some of it filled in there, but not a lot. So you've got to fill in quite a bit for these. Okay? I'm going to use a little system here. Needed, available, and shared. NAS. That's what we're going to be using. Okay? Needed means how many electrons are needed if everybody were to have an octet, or at least everybody were to be happy. And you know what that means. Everybody's going to have filled out our shell. Determine the number of valence electrons that are needed if all atoms satisfy the octet rule. Now, the octet rule usually means how many do they want? It usually means eight, but it's uh, there are exceptions. You can think of one really big exception that never needs eight. And who is that? Hydrogen. Hydrogen always wants how many total? Two. You know, he wants to get two uh, electrons because that will make him like helium. And helium is the most stable of the noble gases. So he certainly is going to want to get more than that. He'll be very happy like that. So that's the first step. You, you see in a compound, and by the way, these are not going to be simple, easy compounds. Now, I'm going to get to the hard ones. I'm going to start off with the easy ones. The easy ones are all going to work out, and everybody's nice. And you could have done them by my old method of just trying to figure out the octets, you know, by, by like a puzzle piece. But now we're going to get the harder ones than that, things that don't work out, okay? So, again, most of the atoms want eight electrons. There are some exceptions. Hydrogen is the big one. You know him. That's not a problem. Two other exceptions that I was looking online about the AP exam, and they pretty much said they're not going to stress the exceptions. But I'm going to tell them to you anyway, beryllium and boron are both exceptions. I actually use boron uh, to do a triangular planar compound when we were talking about um, uh, Vesper theory. And I'm going to do that again on Monday as well. I'm going to go on and review Vesper theory. That will be the last day. When will be the last day I'm going to actually give you any new information. From then on, for the next two weeks, it's going to be all practice exams. And I have them already, most of them already sent over to the copy machine, and most of them are even back. Okay? All right, so let's try this. Uh, let's try for water here. Um, if, in the case of water, notice I've got two hydrogen atoms. Each one would want two electrons. That means I would need four electrons to make hydrogen happy. How many would I need for oxygen to make him happy? How many total electrons do you need to be happy? No, 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 no. Eight, the total number, eight. Okay, so oxygen wants eight. There's one oxygen atom. So the total number of electrons to make everybody happy, if they're if a perfect world, would be 12. Would make everybody have what they wanted. And if I were to do it, I bet you guys could do it for the next guy that's on your sheet, but I don't, I'm actually skipping some guys. I'm going to skip CCL4 because we didn't have enough time. I'm trying to get this all in one video. So I'm going to do NH4 next. NH4 has, it's, it's a, a reason I want to do him and skipped over the other guy. This guy has a little something that's different about him. He's a polyatomic ion. What does that plus one mean? He has a net charge of plus one. So what must, he, he either has, for as far as electrons are concerned, too many or too little. What do you think if his charge is plus one? Too few, right? Okay, he has too few electrons. So we'll talk about that later. But for right now, all I care about is what's needed by N and H. Well, N wants 8, and H, each of the four H's, wants 2. So you see where that's coming from. This 4 corresponds to the fact that I need four hydrogen atoms. Each one wants 2. Okay? So the total number of electrons I would need here would be 16. That makes sense? Okay. Now we get to the available. We don't have 16 available or 12 available in every case. So let's take a look at the available ones. For the available, we want to determine the number of valence electrons. Yeah. Um, number of valence electrons that are available from the atom. We get that basically, in most cases, you can get that right out of the periodic table, right? The group number. It's going to pretty much indicate the number of valence electrons. 
that are available. So yeah, this is different. My, my system was, hey, and then, by the way, Emily already uh, proved she was thinking like my old system when I talked about oxygen. She said two. Oxygen wants two. All right, now we're talking about total number of electrons that are either available or needed. All right, it's going to be done a little bit differently. All right, you're going to have to add or subtract for polyatomic ions. And as you saw from a minute ago, I had that NH4 positive there. We're going to subtract. We have, we have to take away one electron. If it's a negative charge on that polyatomic ion, he's got an extra electron. I'll add that to the total that is available. But if he's got a plus one like NH4 has, they actually have one less electron, because that's how he has that positive charge. Okay, so we'll go back to our examples after you copy that. And see, if, again, I've actually got three on your paper. You're welcome to fill the other guy in at your leisure if you want to. I'm going to give you some example problems or some other problems to do for practice anyway. But let's go back to the water. Water, available. Hey, each hydrogen only has one electron, remember? So he has two available, and oxygen has six available, correct? Because his, he's in group six. And you know he has six outer shell electrons, six valence electrons. Okay. Total number available is eight, right? Now, if you were to look back a minute ago, how many were, it's right on your sheet, it's not on my board, how many were needed for water? Twelve. Twelve. He only has eight. That means we're going to have to share some because there aren't enough available. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's do NH3, NH4 first. By the way, what's the name of the NH4 ion? Ammonium. Ammonium, good. You should know all those polyatomic ions from all the practice we've done, but if you don't, you're going to eventually have to memorize them anyway. You do have to know chlorates, nitrates, sulfates, and their charges and their formulas. Hydrogen, I've got four of him. He's got one available. Nitrogen, notice five, because he's in group five. And I take away one electron because of the positive charge. Yeah. Which means I have a total of eight. <laughs> if you didn't do that, you'd have an odd number, and that would be really difficult. Because we know how electrons like to be paired whether it's in a bond or even anywhere else in an orbital, they want to be paired up. They want to be filled and paired. <laughs> Lone electrons make for what? What do they call them from our mechanisms chapter in uh, organic? Free radicals, right. If you've got a lone, pair, a lone electron, he's going to be a free radical, very, very reactive. And that, we saw that in free radical halogenation. All right, good enough. We've got your needed. We've got our available. Now it's time to do the share. The share, you simply subtract the number available from the number that are needed. And there's never going to be more available, right? It's always going to be, if anything, less. All right, otherwise you're not going to form a bond. And so we subtract the number available from the number needed. To see how many are shared. And by the way, Remember what a shared electron means. Shared electrons are going to be what we like to call a bond, right? I mean, if you think about our, a very simple bond that we did back in that chapter, okay, like HCl, if I were to draw HCl, and I draw them like that, you know, that's how I would have probably drawn seven here, you have one, I share them like that. Well, I could also draw them like this, right? That's the same thing. That bond, that uh, line, that dash, means a shared pair of electrons. Okay, so we've got to figure out how many are shared. Let's do it. Well, for water, it's 12 were needed, 8 were available. I got 4 who will have to be shared. How many bonds is, gonna, is that going to be? 2. It's going to be 2 bonds because 2 electrons per bond. You see why I got 4 shared electrons would be 2 bonds, because each bond is sharing 2. For ammonium, the ammonium ion, you're going to have 8, 12, 16 minus 8, 8 total uh, shared electrons, which means 4 total bonds. I missed them, by the way. Other parentheses. All right, and again, you have the, the CCL4 word. Just ignore him for now. We'll do him later. We'll do him some other time if you want to. All right, so let's finish this up. The last thing to do now is to put them all together and try to figure this out. We, we know how many, this tells me a very important piece of information. It tells me how many bonds have to exist between the atoms. You'll notice for both of these, you would have predicted that anyway. 
There is no surprise here. What would you have said water had to be drawn as? Having two bonds, right? And wouldn't you have said NH4 would have to have four bonds? There is no surprise. I'm purposely doing these early easy ones like this. What's going to happen is sometimes you'll have, well, we'll have four bonds here, but there will only be like NH2 or NH3 or some other numbers like that. What do you do then? What do you make? Double bonds or triple bonds. Right, exactly. All right. So here's how we're going to do these. These are pretty easy. Go draw a skeleton structure. Basically, you put the least electric, usually you put the least electronegative element in the middle. Usually. There are, so one exception would be, for example, just water. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. But hydrogen's always crazy. What is, what's the crazy thing about hydrogen? He's never going to be in the middle. Because he can only form one bond. You all know, understand why. He can only gain one electron. He can only share one electron, I should say. Right? So, we're going to use bonds to represent shared pairs. We're going to fill all them in after we draw our skeleton. And then we'll fill in the rest of the electrons that were available, the rest of them that, were, that needed to be filled in. I will show you with my two examples on here. Okay, so the last thing is you satisfy the octet rule with the remaining, remaining available electrons. And by the way, you generally start from the outside filling in the rest of the electrons. Ending on the inside, and you'll see why when we get to expanded octets. If we get this all done in one period, I'll be very happy and very surprised because uh, we didn't come close in the other class. So we're going pretty quickly here, but I don't think anybody's lost at this point. These are the easy ones. Let's, you have an empty space now below that where I would have done three examples. We're going to do two now, and I'm going to do them. The, all that, look, you're certainly not going to spend the amount of time we just spent doing needed, available, and shared. We just spent, if you look at your notes, a page and a half, right? You're going to do that. You're going to do this. You're going to do N, A, S. That's what you're going to do. And then you're going to draw it. What was my needed for water? I'm doing water here, by the way. This is ancient well. My needed, yeah, we can just look back because we already did it. Was it 12 for water? What was the available for water? Eight. Eight, and that meant four. I don't have to re-explain it. We already did. Okay. Now, we draw the skeleton. Who has to go in the middle for a guy like water? Oh, it's going to have to go in the middle, right? And I have to put the H's on the other side, anywhere I want, around him. Some of you might be saying, well, we know from the Vesper theory, you know that water is not a straight linear molecule. And you're going to find out why when we talk about that on Monday. I'm going to go over that again. You're right. But for now, you can just draw it like that, and that's fine. Okay. Now, I have to connect them and using the correct number of bonds. This will have two bonds because I'm sharing four electrons. Where are the obvious places I have to put those bonds? Right there and right there. So I have taken care of them. They're out of the way. Right? Yeah. So these guys are gone. I have how many more to take care of? I have eight total available. I've used four of them in sharing. Where, how many more do I have left to put? Four. Where are those four going to go? Can I put them on H? No, he doesn't need them. H is completely happy. Hydrogen's happy. He's got his two electrons. He's got his two electrons. They're going to go on oxygen, and that's what he'll look like. And no one would have been surprised by that. You could have done that one, and even the next one probably, last uh, fall when we first taught this. Okay? But you're going to see I am going somewhere with this. Let's do the ammonium one now. NH4 positive. I get need of the available shared again. And again, just looking back to what we just did, it's going to be 16, 8, and therefore 8 are shared, which makes 4 bonds. Once again, no big surprise here. My middle, uh, where am I, uh, I'm obviously going to put N in the middle, because I've got to put my H's around them. I draw my skeleton, my skeletal structure here, right? I connect my 4 bonds, 1, 2, 3, 4. And did I use up all the electrons? I used, uh, Yeah, there were shared 8 and available were 8. I'm done. I got no other electrons to put on, but I do have to show that this whole thing actually has a charge. What's that charge? Plus one. Plus one. And there is one reason I wanted to point this one out to you, though. In our old method, where we were just kind of like a puzzle piece, you would have drawn H like this, and you would have drawn N like this. Everybody agree? You would have drawn them like that, correct? How many H's would you say could I fit around N then? Only three. You would have put one here and one here, and one here. And that's absolutely correct if you're doing ammonia. But the ammonium ion has an extra H here, right? 
Okay? And that's why he has a positive charge. Yeah. Okay? Because he basically had to leave his electron be, uh, at home. He had to leave it at home because he already had it. Nitrogen already has two electrons. Okay. So, that's how you would draw the ammonium ion. Not, again, nothing here is really that difficult. However, it's about to get there. Let's try the next thing. What happens if I have double or triple bonds? Okay? And I actually did these a little bit out of order here. And I also have, uh, for a reason. For double or triple bonds, let me do the HCN first. Because this will be an interesting one for you. We'll do it as if we're doing these on a test. Need it available and share. We're not going to do the big, long... You know, each one first, all the needed, then the available. We're going to do them as I would do them. How many are needed? And here's a little hint to you. Let's just look at this. Atoms that follow the octet rule, just add all of them up. I got one, two. These guys both want octets, so that's going to be 16, correct? Eight and eight is 16. Hydrogen only wants two more, so it's 18. I need 18. Now, the available, you got to kind of be careful. You do the adding up in your head correctly, right? Add them up. you got five for nitrogen, four for uh, hydrogen and one for uh, four for carbon and one for hydrogen. How many what was that total? Ten, right? I believe. Okay. All right. And that leaves shared must be eight. Put four bonds. Yeah, which would be four bonds. Now, this is interesting. I'm doing this one first. I did them out of order to see if anybody picks up on something. I actually can do this guy. Well, how would you think I could do it? Well, who am I going to put in the middle? I, I would put who in the middle? Who would you put in the middle? I would put carbon in the middle for two reasons. He is a less electronegative negative one, but for another reason. Carbon is one of those guys. He forms chains. He likes being in the middle. He always forms multiple bonds. We kind of know that about carbon. But either way, he's a less electronegative, negative, so I put carbon in the middle. All right? Um, I have to put my NH. It doesn't really matter where I put the NH. I'll put them on either side. And I have to connect them with four bonds. Well, how many can H have? He can only have one. So what has to happen here? The triple bond has to form here. And you have no real choice there, do you? You're going to find you have a choice in the next one. And that's going to be a problem for us. Let's lead us into something else. Something called resonance structures and formal charge. All right. Um, am I done? No. There's two electrons I didn't use. Where do you think they're going to go? And how will you know, Olivia? Where do you think i got two more electrons to fit on here? They're on the end. And here's why. For those of you who didn't know why, they would have to go on the end. Was carbon already happy? Yeah. Two, four, six, eight. Remember, a bond is two electrons. Two, four, six, eight. He's happy. Is hydrogen happy? Yeah. Yep. He's got two. Hydrogen was not. Two, four, six. He needed those two, and he got them. Okay, so that's how you get a triple bond. How about for uh, he is uh, how about for carbon dioxide? Let's do him. Well, needed, available, shared. See so if you can do that yourself. Real quick. Do the needed available shared and, and set them up. We have seen him before, so it shouldn't be too surprising. But I am gonna surprise you in a minute after you do this guy. Because I have a feeling everybody's gonna draw the same thing. Oh yeah. I have a feeling you're gonna draw the same thing. I can't, it could be wrong. By the way, we're doing pretty good on time, but I don't want to rush, so I want to make sure you get this. This is a big concept coming up here right now. So do the needed available and share for carbon dioxide. Be careful. Everybody should have 24 for him, right, for the needed? And everybody should have how many for the available? How many? 16. Okay, 16. And shared would be? 4 and 4 is 8. 4 bonds. Okay. Now, I bet you all know carbon's going to go in the middle. With your O on one side, O on the other side. How many bonds do I have to have? Four. Four. So I hope, and I'll bet, everybody did that. Put two there and two there, right? 
And you have how many more electrons we haven't used yet? Eight. Where should they go? Should they go in and then they go on carbon? Who? Yeah. There. There. Right? Two, four, six, eight. Beautiful. Except that's not the only way you could have drawn it. Because it's the same thing you put a triple bond. Ah, exactly. Watch. Here's how you draw that. That's right. Could I not have done that? I could have. And it exists. Turns out, it doesn't exist as much as, it's not as prevalent as this one. But this is what's called a resonance. You notice, remember this arrow? Like a two-sided arrow, but not like, it's not really the same thing as this. That's an equilibrium arrow, usually. Okay? It's usually drawn like that to indicate resonance structures. Now, I'm by no means done with this guy. If I did draw him like that, it satisfies, let's take a look. Does that satisfy my my shared? Absolutely. One, two, three, four bonds, four bonds. I have eight more electrons to put. Where are they going to go? Two are going to go Well, yeah, two will go here, and three pairs will go, uh, will go there. And believe it or not, that is slightly different from even though you might say, well, really, it's kind of like the mirror image. Like, when we start thinking about an answer image. But um, it is, I could have also drawn it like this, couldn't I? Right? Those are three resonance structures for carbon dioxide. Why is A16? Why is A16? That's easy. Why is A16? What does A mean? It's how many are available? Carbon has four available. Oxygen has two times six. But yeah, that's that's twelve plus four is sixteen. What's, what did you do to get? What did you do to get your available? I don't know either. You go by the, the number of outer shell electrons, the, the valence electrons for this guy. You don't go by for the needed. You go by total eight octets. Okay. All right. Everybody good with that? So basically we're going by the group. Yeah, exactly. That's what we were doing for the last few, too. And we still do. We did it here. We did it for all of them. Okay, we're going to continue to do that for available. Okay? Now, but I think maybe this is the problem, and I'm glad this is coming up. I've never, I've never taught this before, so I don't know. I can normally anticipate the problems, but I have a feeling that maybe, Brendan, Emily, a couple well, of people are... the same answer. What would you have for your available? Eight. Well, that's not possible. See, because if you had eight here, you would have required shared electrons would have had to have been, you know, 12. Or, wait, 16. 16. So that's not, it wouldn't have, you wouldn't have actually been doing it right. No, but I'm thinking, I was thinking maybe sometimes you're looking at, well, available, you're looking at, oh, oxygen needs two. Or carbon needs four. No, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at how many they actually have in their outer shell. All right, I can't waste too much more time. We've got to go on to the next one. Because this opens up a can of worms. Okay, resident structures. That's what we're going to talk about next. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Before resonance structure, we got to talk about expanded octets. Um, not everybody fills, not everybody um, fulfills, is happy, and can fulfill a, an octet and, be, and, and satisfy all the electrons. And that happens once in a while. It happens, for example, with third period elements or lower, especially these guys. Do not worry about memorizing them. Do not worry about it. I, again, saw on the, re, the new guidelines for the AP, they're not going to stress expanded octets. They're not going to stress uh, memorizing uh, exceptions. You should know them, all right? But I don't think they're going to make you memorize which elements can do it. Because besides, these are not the only ones anyway. So I'm going to do a couple. I'm actually going to do one. I have two there for you to do. You could try the other one on your own, but I'm only going to do one of them. I'm going to do the ClF3 one. Okay. What happens in this guy, as you're popping this down, I'll keep talking to you. What happens with this, with a guy who is, has an expanded octet, it turns out that some elements can actually accept more than eight, can actually be sharing more than eight electrons. Okay, and generally that's going to happen with larger atoms. Okay, the smaller the atoms, the less likely that's going to happen. So third period elements, that means row three or below, can happen. The few guys that don't do that in period... Uh, third period or below are C, N, okay? Those guys are, are exceptions, all right? Because carbon's, well, you know carbon's crazy anyway. He has a lot of crazy things. Hybridization, we're going to talk about that too. Um, well, we already have, but we're going to talk about it again. 
So what will happen is I'll have leftover electrons. i got to put them somewhere. You're going to put them on the central atom. He's going to actually have more than eight in his, uh, to make him happy. And we're going to do CLF3. That's the one I'm going to do. I know I have PF5 there. You can try that one on your own. Let's do CLF3. Need the available to share. And since we had trouble last time, let's have you at least do that much again to start us off. So make sure everybody's doing at least the needed available share correctly. Got 32 for needed, right? I hope. Got 28 for available, which means I'm sharing four, and therefore I have two bonds. Uh oh. Two bonds. Anybody see a problem with that? I do. <laughs> you got CLF3. I put CL in the middle. No matter what I do, I got to have three bonds. No matter what, I have to have three bonds. So I put that bond in there, even though my rules seem to show that I can't. I have to have those three bonds. And then I'm going to give everybody else an octet, but we're going to have a problem with that. Because we added an extra bond, because we're sharing electrons that should not have been shared according to my calculations, something's going to happen at the end here. Let's give everybody else their octet that they need, okay? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, right? Everybody agree there's 18 around the Fs? All right, what is a shared pair? 20, right? 22, 24. I got 24 total electrons at this point. You say, okay, well, I'll just put some on chlorine. How many does chlorine want? He only wants two more, right? But how many more do I, I need to use 28? So he actually gets both of those. You know, I know, it's ugly. It's ugly. He has to actually have an expanded octet. He's actually sharing, he has possession of more than just eight electrons. That can happen. All right? And if it does happen, that's how you would draw it. Okay? Just so you know. Now, I did say I was trying to get that. Maybe I should change the order of these notes, too, because kind of these resonance structures was led directly into that from previously. But here we are anyway. This is the last page here of your notes. We have 15 minutes to get through it. Uh, so we've got to do resonance structures and something called formal charge here at the end. All right? Well, resonance structures, you've already seen it. You saw it with carbon dioxide. More than one way to satisfy the rules for all the atoms. And it turns out that they exist like that. And they're going to have to share. They're going to actually, well, resonance is a bad word. It doesn't really resonate between two things, but rather there's like a combination or a hybrid of these things, and it has, it has the properties in between. However, it's going to definitely favor the guy who's most stable. And you'll see how we're going to determine that on the next board. But let's just do a couple of resonance structures first. Okay? Notice the first one I have on there is NO2 with a minus one charge. Let's do the needed, available, and shared and see where we run into our trouble here. Okay? Needed, available, shared. We'll do them together because I think you're getting good at this by now. Two, three atoms, eight electrons apiece. What's that mean? 24. Okay, nitrogen's got how many? Five. Oxygen's got six times two is 12. That's 17, right? But wait, I got a minus one. That's 18. Those are the available, 18. You've got to add that extra one because of the minus one charge. If it's negative, we know we have an extra electron. If it was positive, we'd be less one, less electron. All right, finally, we got the shared, uh, which would be, of course, the difference between those, which is six. Everybody go with that. Now, how can I draw this guy? Let's take a look. Again, N obviously has to be in the middle for all the reasons that we know about. But we'll put an O over here, and we'll put an O over here. I have to fit three bonds. Everybody agree? Six electrons means three bonds. Where am I going to put them? One, two, three, like that. Everybody agree? And if I do that, I have how many more electrons to take care of? 18 total available. I've taken care of six with those bonds. Six of 18 is 12. I need 12 more somewhere. 
Well, I could put, I want to satisfy the octet from the outside in. There's six of them. I need six more. Does, nitrogen, or does this oxygen need any? Yeah. yeah, how many? Okay, there's four more. And then two more on nitrogen. There he is. But I can also draw this guy like this. Right? I know it seems like, well, geez, it's like hardly any difference between them. And you're right in this case. There is. But in some of the other ones we're going to do, there will be a difference. And I'm going to try to go through what makes one better or worse than the other. All right, so here I've got, uh, it'll be the same thing, basically, right? Right? But that will be the resonance structures for ni the nitrate. Well, by the way, what's the name of that ion? It's one less than the one in the sheet. It's not nitrate. Nitrite. 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 Okay. All right, let's do another one. Now, you know what? Let's not do carbon dioxide. You can copy carbon dioxide in here. We just did all three carbon dioxides, right? Trying to save us some time. You saw what they look like. Let's do this guy. CNO with a minus one. Need of available shared. My needed for this guy is 24. I hope. 16. And the shared would be... Eight, so I need four bonds. Does that look good there, buddy? Yeah. How can I arrange those? This time, let me let you try to do those resonance structures. All right, I think you're all probably good at need available share by now. Try to do the resonance structures for this guy. I'll give you a hint, people. There are three. Did you all put C in the middle? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll have uh, N and O. C, N and O. C, N and O. Right? I need to put four bonds. I could do this. Right? I could do this. And I could do this. Is that agreed? Yeah. Okay. And now, either way, uh, i got to go back and do the electrons around the rest of them. There are eight taken care of. I've got eight more to fit on here. We've got to be careful now. Uh, I need one, two, three, four there. That would give me him eight. And i got to put eight on here, so it would be like one, two, three, four there. Is that correct? Is that what you have? Can you do the electrons around this guy? Two here, right? And then here, oh, whoa, whoa, sorry, 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 sorry. One Just one there. Got it? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to give you something called formal charge in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to try to explain it to you. But let me just ask you, which of those do you think would most likely be the, the, the most stable? You all think this one would be, right? And for the carbon dioxide, we saw the same thing. And I, I think... For most of you guys, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, the reason for that is we've kind of learned over the years. Things tend to be balanced and happy when they're, you know, you know, kind of in the middle of the road kind of thing. Things that are unusual uh, tend to be more unstable. But there's a way I could actually calculate it. it has, and it's called doing formal charges, or calculating the formal charge of these guys. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do, because you can't always go by just your instinct or your intuition of which one's worse. Of these... Which one do you think is worse, that guy or this guy? Using a little bit of common sense. I think this one's worse, right? Because you're not used to seeing a triple bond with oxygen, are you? I mean, we've done a lot of organic chemistry. Have we seen triple bonds with N? Yeah. So we're okay with that. We know he wants to share three electrons anyway. So we're going to see. We're going to do all these guys, and we're going to find out 
what the formal charge tells us about this. That's what I got to do now. Okay. Formal charges. Basically, a formal charge. This is. It sounds scarier than it is. Trust me. It's the number of valence electrons for an atom minus the number of actual electrons that are and the and half the number of bonded electrons. Now that sounds ugly, and it is, but it's not that bad. You'll see. Number of lone. No, no number of lone. What do you think E? What a negative means for the four billionth time you've seen it written down. Electrons. Okay. Now, I probably only have time to do two of these. I'm going to do the carbon dioxide, because that's a very famous one. And I'm going to do the CNO, the last one we did there. All right, I'm going to skip over the uh, COCl2 one. That's on your, it's on your papers. Okay? Um, and the, by the way, what you're going to be looking for, compounds want to be closest to zero. The, uh, the formal charge closest to zero is what you want. So given a choice between three, two or three uh, resonance structures, you're going to choose the one that has the lowest zero, closest to zero formal charge. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I do the examples. It's not always possible to get that perfectly, so what you do is you want the most electronegative elements, if they're going to have a formal charge, a they should have the negative formal charge. It's certainly not a positive one. Zero is what everybody wants to be. But if he's given a choice where to put the negative, put it on the um, more electronegative element, because he's okay with that. He's a little bit better with that than somebody else. All right, so let's do carbon dioxide again. Now, I don't need to show you how to do them again, because we've already done them. So we're just going to put them up here, okay, for the three of them. We'll do, and i got to make them pretty large this time, because I'm going to have to do some stuff with them. So should we make them pretty large? Yeah, you should make them larger this time for the carbon dioxide one. And I'm only going to do two of the resonance structures because the other one is going to be pretty much identical. Let's see. Alright. And i got to put in the right number of electrons around it, too. And over here it would be, okay? Now, I'm going to try to use a different color. I don't know if it's going to work. Is this going to work? Oh, I want to use a different color up here, but I guess I can't. Uh, I'm going to do, the reason I wanted to make them a little bit larger here is I want to be able to do each, at, each atom has its own for, formal charge, each one of these atoms. So we're going to figure out the formal charge for oxygen. Look what we have to do. The number of valence electrons that oxygen has, how many is that? How many valence electrons does oxygen normally have? Six. Six. Six minus the number of electrons plus the half of the bond electrons. Let's take a look at this guy. This guy looked like this, right? How many total electrons do you have around it? One, two, three, four, right? And then half of these. I've got two more there. Half of those is what? Six. No, half of the two. The, 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 each one of them is a half of electron. Five, six, right? Okay, yeah, you can say six. Right. Okay, so half for that guy and half for that guy. Because well, you, know, you can figure each one of them is two electrons, but he's only really going to be responsible for one of them. So it'll be six minus six. So basically your formal charge is zero. That's your formal charge for that oxygen. Carbon. How many, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. Minus what? Can you figure it out? They're all shared. Okay? Minus four. All right? So that gives me a zero also. So the formal charge is zero. Thank you. I use it for the underclassmen. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, now, the last oxygen over here is going to be exactly the same as that one, isn't it? Okay. It's going to be six minus six or zero. Hey, what did I say? Yeah, these guys all have formal charges of zero. He is going to be most likely the most stable, and he is. 
But let's try to do this guy quick because we don't have much time. This will not come out that way. Watch what happens with oxygen. Oxygen has six, right, for his valence electrons. Minus, watch here now. Everybody watch it. One, two, three, four, five, right? Minus five gives me a charge of, and it's a positive one, right? Doesn't like that, okay? Uh, how about carbon? He's still good, right? Four minus four again, right? So he's, he's zero. He's happy. And then we have over here, oh, watch this guy. Okay? Six is the number of valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus seven gives me a total charge of minus one. Right? We don't like this. Okay? Um, I got a guy with a plus one. I got a guy with a minus one. When I could have had everybody with zeros, he is the most stable. He is the most stable. You can write that down. Most stable resonance structure. By the way, if I did the third resonance structure, would that not have been the exact opposite of this, only flipped around, right? Last one I want to do, I know I don't have a lot of time, uh, is this one down here, right? I'm going to spread him out. We're going to do those guys. I'm just going to get rid of them. Okay. Um, I know we're running out of time here, but. All right. O, C, N, O, C, N, and O, C, N. Right? Those are your three possibilities. Can we do the formal charges for these guys to figure them out? Oh, we got to do electrons first, too. All right, we're going to need... Is that good? Is that right? I do them all right? All right. Oxygen. I'll do them underneath this time. I've got his, uh, his uh, valence electrons are 6, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, gives me a charge of a positive 1. I'll put it up here. So uh, plus 1. Negative 1. All right. Sorry. Negative 1. Sorry. I fall. Negative 1. Negative one. Sorry. Okay, subtract. Math is hard. Right. We all know this guy's going to be zero, right? Four minus four or zero. And nitrogen, he's got five minus one, two, three, four, five. He's zero. Okay. So not too horrible, right? We got a minus one, a zero, and a zero. Let's look at this guy. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Minus six gives me a zero. That's good. We know carbon is going to be four minus four again. Zero. That's good. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen was five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Minus six, not negative two. Negative one. Hmm. Okay. And lastly, I've got six. One, two, three, four, five, minus five is a positive. This one is a positive one. I know the bell is going to ring. We just kind of hang out for a second. Four minus four, again, is zero. And five minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oof, that's ugly, right? What is that? Negative two. All right. Now, I want you to see something about this. Okay? We have. It looks like we have a tie, but we don't. Who's the best guy here? We'll call A, B, or C. It's not B. It's A. Here's why. I've got a negative one here, and I've got a negative one there, so you say, well, they're about the same. I told you, if you get a formal charge, it's negative. It wants to be on the more electronegative. And if we look at the periodic table, oxygen is definitely further in being more electronegative. So he is the most stable. So... It, I wanted to point something out to you about this right before I shut this video off. One last thing. You might have thought carbon dioxide was carbon dioxide because it looked the most balanced. You got to do the formal charges to be sure. This guy looks kind of balanced, but it has to do with nitrogen actually not being as happy, all right, as this. 
as uh, as a, as a, as the um, oxygen having that negative charge on. All right, we're done. What's that?